empirical and molecular formulas. Specifically, we're going to learn how to determine an empirical formula. So we've already determined the percent composition of elements in a compound. Um, and we saw that in the previous one where I'm going to start with, for example, doing this example five that I left you to do on your own. Um, if I had one gram of hydrogen and 127 grams of iodine in this compound and the mass of the compound is 128 grams, the percentage of hydrogen would be the one gram of hydrogen divided by the 128 grams of the HI compound times 100. And so if I do that, 1 divided by 128 times 100, I get about 0.78%. And then if I do the percentage of iodine, it'd be 127 grams divided by the 128 grams in total times 100. And we get about 99.22%. Uh, so huge difference there. So we did that in the last lecture, but in this one, we're going to talk about, okay, how do I get formulas now from percentages? So formulas that we typically work with are formulas that were experimentally determined. Like we were able to determine from an experiment that the percentage of hydrogen was 0.78% and the percentage of iodine was 99.22%. This simplest whole number ratio of elements in a compound is known as an empirical formula. And empirical means based on data. Know that for a future unit test. Empirical means based on data. So H2O and C3H8 are empirical formulas because the ratio of the elements are in their simplest form cannot de be divided further. So let me just do H2O. So for example, H2O, we got 2H to 1O. I cannot divide that any further. Or if I have C3H8, I have three, H, three carbons to eight hydrogens. Again, that number cannot be divided further. If somehow I had C4H10, 4 and 10 can be divided. This is not empirical as an example. Both of them, I would have to divide them by two. I would actually get a two to five empirical ratio. Now, speaking of not empirical things, those not empirical formulas would be known as molecular formulas. So let's look at this table here. If the empirical formula is CH and the molecular formula then is C2H2, what is the relationship between the two of them? looks like if I go from CH to C2H2, looks like I'm multiplying that individual CH unit by 2. Not only am I multiplying its unit by 2, I'm also multiplying its molar mass by 2. A CH empirical formula, which is a 1 to 1 that cannot be divided further, has a molar mass of 13. But the molecular formula... C2H2, which is a different compound, has a molar mass of 26. That's times 2. You could do the same thing for benzene here or ethanoic acid and glucose. Let's look at methanol and ethanoic acid. Methanol has a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio that cannot be divided further. Its molar mass is 30. If I multiply that by 2, I get ethanoic acid, a molecular formula. And look, its molar mass is also multiplied by 2. What can we deduce about the difference between empirical and molecular formulas? Well, they differ by a whole number integer. So if I look at this little particle diagram example, if this is CH, what would this be? Well, there's two C's, two H's. This would be C2H2, and all I did was multiply this by 2. So I doubled the individual unit of CH. The molecular formula of a compound is a simple whole number multiple of the empirical formula. So the difference between CH and C6H6 is a multiple of, I got to multiply by 6. So just a little definition there. We're going to get to the end of this lecture here talking about how to determine an empirical formula. And this is so, 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 so important. 
Working backwards, if we're given the percent composition of the elements in a compound, we can determine the empirical formula. There are four steps that you're not going to have to memorize. You'll always be given. But no, for quiz and final. On the final exam, you will have to do a question like this, and I will give you these steps. So let's say a compound was analyzed and found to contain 74.8% carbon and 25.13% hydrogen. What is the empirical formula? These are the four steps that we're going to do with these percentages. Step one is assume that this percentage is 100 grams out of 100 grams. So those percentages automatically become grams. So take the percentage and just say, I have grams of it. Then, with these grams, my second step here is convert the mass to moles using the molar mass. Grams divided by molar mass is moles. We learned that in our last lecture. Finally, we're going to get a bunch of different moles. Divide each moles by the smallest moles. So if I get 4 and I get 6, I divide both of them by 4, if that was an example. Round to the nearest whole number, and I'm going to say make subscripts in empirical formula. I'm going to add that in. So let's follow these steps now. So I have 74.8% carbon and 25.13% hydrogen. First step is assume we have 100 grams and turn those percentages into grams. So that means I have 74.8 grams of carbon and 25.13 grams of hydrogen. Cool. Then the next step says, take these masses and convert them into moles by dividing by the molar mass. Well, the molar mass of carbon is about 12 grams. The molar mass of hydrogen is about one gram. I'm gonna divide these masses by those molar masses. So for carbon, it's 74.8 grams of carbon divided by about 12 grams per mole, per mole and I get 6.23 moles of carbon. And then for hydrogen, I'm going to take, there are 25.13 grams of hydrogen, and I'm going to divide by one gram per mole of hydrogen, and I get 25.13 moles of hydrogen. Then it says divide each mole value by the smallest of moles calculated, between these two, 6.23 is my smallest moles. So I'm going to divide both of these by 6.23. So for carbon, we got 6.23 divided by 6.23. For hydrogen, we got 25.13 divided by 6.23. And so if I get this, I'm going to get one carbon and 25.13 divided by 6.23, and four hydrogens here. On the calculator, it said 4.033. We could round that to the nearest whole number, and so we have one carbon, four hydrogens. This cannot be divided any further. I'm going to make this one and four into subscripts to write our empirical formula now. C1H4. Therefore, our empirical formula is CH4. So that's going to end this video, which is going to be an introductory into that empirical formula. I also don't want this video to be too long. In the next video, I'm going to do more examples of determining an empirical formula and then end with what do I do with molecular formulas. So again, to recap, there are four steps to determining an empirical formula. If I take these percentages, I turn them directly into grams. Then I convert those grams to moles. Then I divide by the smallest moles. And then with those numbers that I get, like I got the one and I got the four, I write those as subscripts to write an empirical formula. You could try doing question seven on your own to check to make sure that you understand this. 